Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And I'll start, as I always do, with announcements. And I have one that's going to be so exciting. So anyway, first of all, every Wednesday we post new workshops on the member's site. And this week it is Cooking with Dell, the Amazing Grain. Gluten-free doesn't mean free of taste and texture, so Dell's going to show you how to do some cool stuff, baking things that are gluten-free. Your normal friends will not know the difference. Um, and of course, there's 125 other workshops you can watch on that member site, so get there and get an education. Second thing is um, Wellness Bucks. Refer somebody to the Wellness Forum and you get a $5 certificate. We have people that have accumulated 25 and 30 certificates, so call us or email me to find out how you can earn Wellness Bucks. Um, next thing, advanced study. This brings me to our great announcement. I've been covering this book this month called Radical Remissions, and the people who participated in the workshop really loved it. The book was amazing. It's about cancer patients who survive against all odds. And I have secured Dr. Kelly Turner, the author of that book, to speak at our fall conference November 13th through 15th, and Dr. Richard Applin, author of The Great Prostate Hoax, and the researcher who discovered prostate-specific antigen, is another speaker we've secured. So you you need to be in Columbus, Ohio on um, November 13th through 15th. You don't want to miss these speakers and the good food and all the other speakers that we'll have lined up by that time. Last but not least, Food Over Medicine starts this week. If you're going to take the certification course, it's an eight-hour course that I teach based on my book, and then I give you presentations you can go out and give to the public. So, anyway, I want to talk about exercise first, one of my favorite topics. We all know it's good for you. Obvious benefits, weight loss, remaining lean, building aerobic capacity, feeling and look better, looking better. Um, also, you've heard me talk about this. Exercise has been associated with reduced risk of disease. And a lot of that is related to the fact that exercise will keep you lean and carrying body fat as a risk factor. But there are not a lot of studies that show good explanations and cause and effect relationships clearly between exercise and health benefits. So a new study attempted to quantify some of that and actually show what the cause and effect relationship is. And it reports that exercise changes the shape and function of our genes and that is how we end up in better health. Exercise changes our genes. So very important because so many people still think that they are victims of their genetic predisposition. So uh, the changes are based on epigenetic changes, which change the operation of, but not the genes themselves, through a process called methylation. And the simplest ex explanation for methylation, and we could do like a whole hour on it, but we don't have time here, it's a process through which genes become more or less able to receive and respond to biochemical messengers. Now for this study, Swedish, Swedish researchers enrolled 23 young adults who were given all kinds of physical tests and then instructed to exercise for three months. Now, in order to isolate the effects of exercise, because so many things can change methylation patterns, including diet, the participants were told to engage in cycling with just one leg for 45 minutes four times a week for the three-month period of time. Now, when the researchers evaluated the patients at the end of the three months, not surprising, their, the leg that they cycled with was stronger and more powerful. But the big take-home point was changes in the DNA of muscle cells. More than 5,000 sites on the genes of muscle cells had new methylation patterns, and those patterns did not occur in the muscle cells of the leg that did not participate in exercise. The affected genes, most of them were involved in energy metabolism, insulin response, and inflammation in muscles, which is how we can explain the benefits of exercise and health. So, I'm going to continue to nag you about the exercise and nag everybody I come in contact with about the exercise because it's good for you and this is one more reason it is good for you. All right, speaking of things that are good for you, according to a new analysis, women can reduce their risk of diabetes by a lot and cardiovascular disease by adopting just six healthy behaviors. I'll tell you the extent to which they can reduce their risk in a minute. It will shock you. So the six healthy habits include not smoking, maintaining a lean body, engaging in at least two and a half hours of physical activity a week, limiting television to seven hours a week or less, and eating a healthy diet. And according to the lead researcher, practicing these habits reduced risk even for women who had already developed markers for coronary artery disease, such as high cholesterol and hypertension. 
Now, why this is becoming important is that, of course, reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease is important for everybody, but for women, the incidence of cardiovascular disease and death rates from CAD have been actually going up quite a bit. And so um, the researchers hypothesized that the increasing incidence of diabetes and obesity are probably contributing factors to that. So the study began in 1991, and it included 88,940 women between the ages of 27 and 44. Now, if all the women in the study had adhered to all six habits, here would have been the result. 92.9% .9 of the cases of diabetes would have been prevented, 57% of the cases of hypertension would have been avoided, and 40% of the cases of high cholesterol would have been avoided. Now, those are pretty amazing numbers when you think about it. It would have been better if the subjects were eating a wellness form style diet and engaging in the exercise patterns that we recommend. But even so, it's spectacular enough that I'm hoping more people will get motivated to do the right thing and more clinicians will get motivated to tell patients, hey, it's not your genes, it's your diet and your lifestyle. And if you adopt a health-promoting diet and lifestyle, you will save yourself from the suffering that so many people in our country experience as a result of coronary artery disease and diabetes. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.